this area is probably the best area in the North American continent for a bighorn sheep. One of your best friends calls you and says, I got a Montana bighorn sheep tag. I don't care if it's a wedding, a funeral, hot date with your wife, whatever. You drop what you're doing and you go. In the 18 days that I've been out here looking, I have probably seen around 80 rams. When he calls me and says, Randy, I think I got the sheep that I'm interested in. Vaughn's one of those kind of hunters that when he, he says, this is my sheep, you can bet that that sheep's in big trouble. Randy and Vaughn are hunting in the Missouri River Breaks, a public land area managed by the Bureau of Land Management. The Lewis and Clark expedition passed through this region in 1805, documenting bighorn sheep and other game to be a quote, wildlife resource that in variety and abundance exceeded anything the eye of man had ever looked upon. Randy is catching up to Vaughn, who has been scouting and hunting for over two weeks. Vaughn has his eyes on a special ram he's named Tank. With that goal in mind, Randy and Vaughn set out to fulfill this once-in-a-lifetime hunt. This is my kind of joint right here. They like hunters. They don't care if you got and gill them out in the parking lot. This is it. Freezers, you name it. Anyone who's a bighorn sheep hunter knows that Montana is kind of the promised land of bighorn sheep. Montana takes more bighorn, big bighorn rams than any state in the country. I've seen another sheep that I think is just as big as him that I would also really like to take another look at. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh, there's just so many big sheep out there. It may not be a good thing seeing several really big rams. You know, it's hard to make up your mind but I've taken pictures of one really big ram and a lot of people seem to think that uh, he's the one. Last Sunday, there were two jet boats that came up uh -huh. the river and pulled in just to the west of us. So I meant with a boat would be an effective tactic if you guys wanted to do that. I've been applying for a bighorn sheep tag for a little over 40 years, probably 42. See, there's where one of them was bedded. The uh, chances of drawing this tag are very, very slim. Let's just sneak in here and peek over the edge. Mm -hmm. I kind of hope you don't see any as steep as it is right here. Vons told me, he said, Randy, all of our hunting buddies were up here helping me. And they told me, you're nuts for not shooting that ram. And after seeing pictures of it, I agree with them. Vaughn, you are nuts for not shooting that ram. Okay, there's three, four. There's five rams down there. Three big rams in that bunch. You got one up and to the right. Yeah, okay. look, ooh, he's got long horns. Just two stinking mini decisions. You know, when I started out, that's exactly what I was looking for right there. I know that there is a tremendous ram right in this area. If he's as big as everybody seems to think he is, then uh, he will definitely make my 200 inch mark. How'd they spot us from this far away already? <laughs> They're just used to seeing anything that pops up on the horizon. Oh man, that one is really long. He is. Yeah. He's he could be mid 40s. Really? Yeah. I've not seen one like that long one up here yet. What you thinking? He is a beautiful ram, but we can leave them alone because I still want to find Tank. I think he's way bigger than that ram. Really? Oh yeah, but that's a beautiful one. Tank, the one you showed. Yeah, let oh, me yeah. take a you peek. Take a look. Yeah. Is ta Tank's the one you showed me those pictures of? Oh yeah, that you've been seeing with regularity. Mm -hmm. Well, I stayed with him three days last week. He's been here for 18 days. He's looked over so many rams. He knows what he's looking for. He told me, Randy, I'm walking away from that ram for one reason. I know I've seen one bigger than that here and I think I know where he is. There's an old saying, Vaughn, that says, don't pass up on one day that which you would shoot on the last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The tree 
our Boone and Crockett rounds. Can you just shoulder your rifle and oh, fuck. <sighs> off to the next one? I've, I've seen bigger ones. I know there's a bigger one running around here someplace. He's been here for 18 days. He's looked over so many rams. He knows what he's looking for. He told me, Randy, I'm walking away from that ram for one reason. I know I've seen one bigger than that here, and I think I know where he is. The last time we saw them, they were right down there in that same canyon. Jet boats that we saw last week, they came in right down there next to those trees. I see a bunch of I don't know, the raven out there? Yeah, there are. I don't suppose that's a bad sign, do you? I wonder if there is a gut pile down there. I'd hate to be looking for somebody who's no longer here. Let's do this. Um, I was kind of going to go where the, you showed me that side canyon this morning. Yeah. I'm going to go out there, and it's only another three or 400 feet down. I'll drop down and see if there is a gut pile there while you stay up here in glass. And, Good idea. When you decide you're going to hunt one animal and you've chosen this is the guy I'm going after, you have to approach your hunt a little differently. And that's kind of what caused me to tell Vaughn, I'll drop down this ridge and I'll go check out what those ravens are eating on. You can't leave that stone unturned. I went down there and I come around the corner and I see this coyote. I was thinking, OK, I'm probably going to find maybe a dead deer. I never expected to find a sheep. I can see there's a monstrous ram down there, so I'm climbing down there to see what he is. Dang it. Might be the one I'm looking for. I can just see this big curl of horn. Instantly, when I looked through the binoculars, I knew what was there. The ram is laying there. Boy, does that stink. That's not too long ago as far as a kill. I know he's the best, <laughs> the ram Vaughn was looking for. He's one of the biggest rams you'll ever see. That right there, that is a 200 inch ram. His bases are just massive. He's the guy we have all the pictures of. And here he is, he died falling off that mountain right up there. The other option is that some hunter shot him and uh, the hunter shot him, didn't follow up on the shot. But regardless, he's dead. This tank that Vaughn was after had a big scar on his nose and that's the first thing I saw. I'm like, oh my goodness, Vaughn is not gonna be happy when he sees the tank is right here dead. I gotta get out of here though because we got another really big ram over here that Vaughn can shoot. This is the one Vaughn passed this ram three times in the last 10 days. But what a terrible fate. What did you find? It's a long haul. I know it is. I knew it was going to be a long haul. <sighs> but it's nice of you to volunteer. That's him. It is. Oh, it is him. He's getting you through these pictures. He was laying right down in that crevasse or drainage down there. Look at that. My heart just sank because I knew the dream Vaughn had all the effort he's put into this hunt was gone. It's it's not going to happen the way that he wanted it. That's him. I don't know. Sick. You walked away from him, what, three times? Yes. Three times I could have shot him. I guess it would just be speculation, but um, I almost feel that either somebody poached him or they shot him and he got away. I'm wishing now, though, after looking at him last week, that uh, I would have just gone ahead and taken him at that time. But I didn't. The beauty of, of when you draw a tag is that you get to define your hunt. Vaughn has definitely defined this hunt as he's not going to shoot until he sees the one he wants. So we're in here looking for slick. 
wherever you are slick, stand up and be accounted for it because we'd like to give you the victory ride on the way out of here. Holy cow, Bon, I'd shoot that sucker in a heartbeat. I don't think he comes around far enough. Huh? I've been out here looking for a long time and I've seen three or four that I consider to be really big rams. When he turns his head away, but he sure looks big. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, no, he's not long enough. Really? Nope. All right, you sure you don't want him, huh? I think we better go find Flair. <sighs> All right, let's load him up. The day that we found Tank dead, I was disappointed. It turned the hunt about 90 degrees. We're just gonna work along this ridge line, try and peek over whenever we can uh, find a good spot to look down. All of a sudden, Vaughn has to think to himself, all right, Tank's not here anymore. We've called the game warden, game warden's coming to pick him up. Vaughn says, all right, there's one other big ram I wanna look for, but if I don't find him, that flared out ram that we started calling Flare, he looks pretty good. Brand new country here, Vaughn. I've not seen this. Have you been over here? Nope. First time in here. Cool. It's Vaughn's tag, so I kept my mouth shut. But Vaughn, if I had that tag, we would be done hunting right now. But it's his tag, and that's the beauty of hunting. If you're the tag holder, you define your trophy, you define the experience you want, and it's your hunt. So you do it the way you want to do it. That's a good sign, I hope. You sure you don't want to shoot one of those, Bob? Hopefully, I want to get a really good look at this ram that we've called Flare. If that happens, and we can really judge just exactly how big he is, then I'm thinking that that would be a good option. There's five of them out there. I, right now, you're only going to be able to see three of them. If you look through the scope, the biggest one is over the ridge to the right. It's a long ways over there. Right, and we, we have to go around. We'd spend the rest of the day going all the way over there, and if he's not, if that's not one of them, we don't want him. So many sheep, so little time. Uh, we got lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> We've already been here 19 days, yeah. I just don't know how much more sand is in your hourglass. <laughs> This country is really, really broken. It's kind of, uh, kind of like the Grand Canyon in a miniature fashion, and it just provides, you know, great habitat for the sheep. I mean, look at this terrain. To go to one mile over to that ridge over there, you're going to drop 800 feet of elevation, and you're going to come up 800 feet of elevation, and it's this kind of elevation, so. We're trying to stay as much as we can on these nice ridges and glass down and everywhere and see what we can find. And my biggest concern is if we find them, is Vaughn gonna shoot them? Well, Vaughn, I'd say I'm willing to walk another ridge with you, but all you do is pass on every sheep we see, so I'm starting to wonder if this is worth it. Well, them. we'll go over and glass some more. Oh, wow. wow. It's Vaughn. Look at that thing. Holy cow. Look at wow. the size of that ram. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, oh man, feel how heavy that thing is. You couldn't hardly even pick up the head and the horns, and he'd been dead for probably six months or so. Here I am in four days. I've been able to find two rams that would be way, way up in the record book that are laying out dead in the woods. I bet you that's got to be, what, a 190-inch ram, you think? Oh, yeah. Easily. We'll tell the game warden where he is. Yep. The one on the right, is that the, the flared out one? That one that's closest to that tree? Yeah. Yep, that's flare. Pretty looking up this. That's right. They've already got us. We're gonna have to stay out of sight. So maybe sneak down through a little bit that around the edge of those trees there and drop off into that deep that, draw. Yep. Boy, they picked a good spot to bed down. There's nothing there. I think we can stay out of their sight over there. We'll just, we can sneak along and keep looking, make sure that uh, they can't see us coming in on them. <laughs> 
Once we get out there, there's no vegetation. The only thing we got is just the relief and topography. That's right. But it looks way different when you get down there. We'll be, I think we'll be hidden. You promised me if we drop down there, you're gonna shoot? <laughs> no promises. <laughs> Those of you, like myself, who would love to come and hunt bighorn sheep in Montana, drawing a tag is probably the most difficult part of the entire hunt, as hard as sheep hunts can be. I've lived in Montana now for 20 years, and I've yet to draw a bighorn sheep tag. I have friends who've waited 30, 40 years, they've yet to draw a bighorn sheep tag. I think Vaughn told me he'd been applying now for over 45 years, and he finally drew a bighorn sheep tag. Hopefully they've been headed this direction. So I'm hoping that they will cross that draw down there and come out on the other side. Give me a shot. Give me a shot. This is a chance of a lifetime. I am going to put in the time and effort to find the sheep that I want. And one of the drawbacks is I have seen so many big sheep that it really starts getting a little confusing as far as exactly what you want. I had an idea when I first started out what I wanted, but it uh, changed after looking at so many different big sheep, and they're all a little bit different. He did get a good look at Flair at that point, and he turned to me and he said, Randy, that, that's probably a ram I'd shoot. So Vaughn goes out on the edges out there, and he's looking in glasses, and he sees him heading now to the southwest. We knew that Flair was in that group dropped down in there and it was it was dicey at times it was so steep and we walked and walked and walked and then we came down and we came back up and we get to the bench and we peek up and now they're starting to come out on another spot over to our right Vaughn he's just waiting and waiting and waiting and I'm thinking my goodness is he ever gonna shoot And all of a sudden I hear Vaughn pull the trigger, boom. I knew it was a great hit, great shot. My gun's jammed up. I can't believe this. He walks over the ridge and down the other side. And I'm thinking to myself, oh no, he's down the other side. That's exactly where we don't want to pack him out of. But that's how it happens sometimes when you go sheep hunting. Thank you, buddy. Beautiful. I tell you what, Vaughn, that guy made you work for every inch of <laughs> every pound of meat, every every bit of that trophy. It's my philosophy that so many people that would like to draw this tag never will. And I think it should be once in a lifetime. So it would you know, I would feel bad if I started putting in for this tag again and drew it. <laughs> yeah, and there are people that have never been able to draw this tag, so I won't put in for it again. I think it should be a once in a lifetime deal and I've had my chance. I'd like to see somebody else have their chance. 21 days, Vaughn, you have been after it. I can't believe that. I'm gonna miss. I'm really gonna miss doing this. You are, but you know what? Every time you look on your wall and see that beautiful ram and every time you eat some of his meat, you're gonna say, you know what, buddy? I bet you thought I was never gonna do this. You know, as many sheep as you walked away from, you had me convinced that you didn't want to shoot a sheep. <laughs> In this On Your Own Adventure, our hunters encountered two dead rams, including Tank, Vaughn's dream ram. Both rams would have been the state record in every other state. Montana game wardens had determined that Tank had been poached, a crime and a travesty to hunting and to fellow hunters. After the disappointing turn of events with Tank, Vaughn was rewarded with this beautiful ram. For these two longtime friends, Vaughn and Randy felt the immense satisfaction of sharing many hard days of field. So for Vaughn, this was a million dollar hunt for a $75 tag. And for the lucky hunter that draws the tag, the same opportunity is available for you. Which is why the very best part of any on your own adventure is that it's completely accessible and completely achievable by you, the real American hunter. <laughs>